Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Deep Def Episode 9. It has been a very long time. It is good to be back. And I, I just love, you know, doing this and to be back, you know, at this studio. It just means the world to me to talk to you guys. And today's guest for this return episode for Episode 9 is my guest today, Daniel. How's it going, D-Lo? Welcome to Deep Def here where we dive to the deep end, my friend. You know... You're joining, like, I'm not going to say a great list of names, but obviously, uh, you know, there's been, like, beautiful <laughs> guests that have been on the show previously, and, you know, they're doing amazing stuff right now. And I can't shout out my homie, bro. No, yeah, shout out to Bara. Um, he, he's a man of the hour, and always, and everyone, man, everyone, like, grinding, doing their part in life, and welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today, bro? I'm feeling good. It's cold outside today. No, it's cold as fuck, bro. Really I can't, I, I can't I do the cold, I do not like bro. the cold. <laughs> I don't like the cold either. Like, for me, like, I can't handle the cold necessarily. Like, I don't mind snow. But uh, it's just a windy chilliness in Chicago. Yeah, like as soon as that it, wind hits, it's, it, it's different. You like, oh, bro, <laughs> it, it hits so bad. I, I just don't like when my skin like feels a certain way, bro. In the wind, like like uh, I said, I don't mind snow. It's just the wind part, bro. The wind yeah, sucks. Yeah, that's what it is. Windy city for real. No, it is windy city. It's bipolar too. I hate the weather here. Like it was mm. just feeling like spring two, three days ago. Yeah, now it's cold. It's Arctic <laughs> it's cold. Basically, up. it's bipolar. No, oh, yeah, it's shit. It's shitty, bro. Bipolar. But. During the winter season, of course, it is always the return of hoops, you know, NBA hoops, college hoops, Mm -hmm. uh, school hoops, which, you know, you're doing right now, bro. And I want to ask you, where, when did it all begin for you with the love and interest uh, for the game of basketball, man? It started to begin when I was around like five years old. I've been playing basketball like all my life, but I started to take it serious like after eighth grade. And well, I started... I when I started uh when I was five years old I was playing different sports I was playing baseball, soccer and basketball those were my three sports my first sport was soccer then it was baseball and then basketball, and then um, I just um, was playing um, wait hold on, yeah I was playing soccer baseball and basketball, and like, I just I just liked basketball more I was really good at baseball, but. Love for I basketball just, was yeah, there it was just yeah. different. Like I, I could, if I would have kept going with baseball, I probably could have got like more. I don't know how to say more farther, but like when I switched to basketball, I wasn't that good at basketball. I just liked how like how it was. You know the, what the I mean? Sport, the the sport, the floor of the game. Yeah, yeah. like to just shoot the ball and watch it just go through the basket. It was it's just different. You know, it's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling. Yeah. yeah so then once I started um, playing basketball, I started to train. Shout out my uh, Tay. I started to train with him, and then I got better within like a year or two. All it is is just really hard work. No, it is hard work, game. man. It is hard work because for me, like my first sport was soccer too. Like as a European growing up, before I even watch cartoons, like they're they're gonna shove soccer in my face regardless. So uh-huh. soccer was my first sport playing, and I loved playing basketball more. Like someone asked me, "What's your favorite sport to watch?" Soccer was my favorite sport to play. Uh-huh. Basketball, it's not even close. So like, like you said, like shooting into the net, like the team play aspect, like the flow. Just so much a part of the game. Like, I don't know what it was about basketball. It was mm-hmm. more so like watching the NBA that got me into playing basketball before shooting the ball myself. Uh-huh. But man, I just love basketball, bro. It's just a different yeah, feel, different. bro. <laughs> Especially during the winter season. Like, everyone is like up for it, indoor runs in the city, bro. Like, uh-huh. what field house is open, what gym is open, yeah. you know? I, I just love the whole culture of basketball, bro. Especially in Chicago. I love the basketball culture, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, when I, start, when I started playing basketball, I was at the YMCA. And then it progressed, and then um, I started hooping for my middle school team. My middle school team was decently good at bridge, but um, then that COVID year hit, so now I wasn't able to hoop for a uh, year. Bro, yeah. I was like, wow. So I only hooped like a year in middle school. That year of COVID fucked up everything, bro. Everything. For everyone. For everyone. I think everyone had like something in plan, and then COVID uh, just like just hit got everyone, away. Everything. <laughs> everything, bro. Yeah. And COVID sucks, but you know, glad we're technically over it now. Yes. Like, I don't know why people. So wear masks, but uh-huh. that's neither here or there. Um, <laughs> that's on them. <laughs> but yeah, uh, how much time exactly like have you had like dedicated to the game of basketball growing up until now? Now you mentioned like you uh-huh. started off with baseball, then yeah. you went to basketball. So I'm assuming like in the beginning there was a lot you know you had to learn other than you know like the uh-huh. shooting of the world, a little passing, like you know little defensive game plans, like offensive mm-hmm. game plans. Like I'm sure like there was like a good amount you had to learn, especially if you wanted to like take it serious, of course. Yeah. It's been about like around like 11 years. And then like after eighth grade is when I started to take it serious. And I was like, I could, um, you said, you said how long? Yeah. Yeah. It was around like 11 years. Oh man. That's yeah. A long time. Uh huh. Long ass time, bro. Yeah. 
because like a lot of people will take time to decay on the crowd and and what, what's crazy is like some people like it's very rare in a few some people will be like very lucky to be gifted with like some sort of like natural talent like whether mm -hmm. it's hops or just a natural shooting type. yeah like some naturally people, yeah, some people have to work for it. Mm. So I imagine like those 11 years, like you had to work for it. And like, I had to work really hard. <laughs> same, and like, same here, cause like, you know, I was swooping at one point for a little mm. bit. And for me, like, I, I was a horrendous shooter. Like, I knew how to box out, play yeah. defense, like, play my defensive role, but shooting, like, absolutely not. Like, yeah. I'll probably take like a corner three, <laughs> but that's about it and eventually over time like you just teach yourself like the more time you put into more it, rep more repetition more repetition exactly bro like shout out to like oh my coach i forgot his name but you know he was he was such a big influence on like you know his name coach harris uh not coach harris oh, it was somebody else coach. yeah but oh, okay. Man, dude, like a lot of a lot of hoopers be having the same coaches. It's crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world, bro. It's a small world. It like, is. Damn, you train dude too? Like uh -huh. Chicago's <laughs> a very small world. Everybody knows everybody. Very small world. And I, we'll get into that for sure, you know, with basketball culture and stuff. And I wanted mm -hmm. to ask, like, with basketball culture and stuff, what has been like a tough obstacle for you playing so far? So has there been any sort of injuries? Was there ever a moment where you tried out for a team and it didn't go your way. Was there a moment you had a falling out with a coach? Was there any sort of obstacle in your way along the way in basketball? Like with basketball, you, you got to go through a lot of obstacles. And it, teach, it, teach, it taught myself because it's like, am I going to quit right here? Am I going to be done? Am I like, am I going to just go over this and just keep pushing myself? And that's what I did. Cause so a couple of my obstacles was playing basketball, like was my shooting. Like I had a good shot. But it wasn't at that level. Like, you know, Lonzo Ball? I had, yeah. I had his shot. No, oh, my God. Yeah, Ooh. horrible. Yeah. Horrible. But I, it was going in, so it doesn't matter how it looked as long as it went in. And um, also, when my AU team, I was sitting on the bench. And um, I was like, you know what? I got to be able to push myself and work harder so that I could be able to start. So that's what I started to do. I started to um, keep just keep working on my shot, getting, keep getting, going into the gym, literally waking up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m. for all open gyms. Tell, texting my coach like when I can when can I get in the gym, and just like just um pushing myself to the limits. No, yeah, you have to like that's just the best way to go about it. Whether it's sports, jobs in life, school, like if you show like that teacher to the professor, the coach, your manager, like how bad you want it, then you will get the opportunity. And I think that's amazing what you did because like a lot of people nowadays, you know, they expect, you know, a lot of things to be given. And that's what mm -hmm. sort of sucks about this current that generation. It just comes to you like that. Yeah, everything comes natural to you. Like the more work you put on yourself, like I said, even like sports, outside of sports, like everything will come to you. Uh, money, offers, you know, women. Uh, <laughs> uh, everything, yeah. Everything's gonna everything. gonna come your way. Everything's <laughs> gonna come your way. It's just, it's all about like putting work on yourself and dedicating all that time, you know, to going to that next level. So mm. yeah, I must imagine when you sat on that bench and sitting on the bench isn't fun. Like some yeah. people will be like, oh, you know, like I don't mind it, but like if you uh -huh. wanna go far, like fuck the bench. Like you yeah, gotta you got it. be in the starting yourself. lineup. Exactly, you gotta go after those minutes. So like, I bet like those first few games you're like, fuck, why am I on the bench? Like, uh -huh. I just wanna play so bad, right? Definitely, yeah. Fuck. I bet, I bet, bro, because it's like I've had those moments too where it's just like I don't want to be on the bench. I want to be starting. But if you show like, you know, I want to be able to play and be able or, to score. Yeah. And what I realized the most was like if you like mope, show attitude, like that's just not uh -huh. going to solve anything. Like, it's so not. Like, oh, like I want to just start. Like, nah, like, you have to like work for it. Like that uh -huh. one scrimmage game, like if you're if you're busting one of the starters' ass, the uh -huh. coach would be like, maybe I should start yeah, him over dude. I, yeah. That's just how He's it is. Some. Exactly, whatever scrimmage, extra ass, film meeting rooms, like go like to the most like smallest thing. Like like I had this there was this one dude I knew, um, his name is Jay. Like he went like he was so dedicated to hooping. Like he doesn't uh, hoop as much anymore. He'll, he'll hoop for fun, but dude, he went to yeah. every high school meeting, he went to every fucking everything. like everything. Like he went to the smallest thing. He's like, All right, basketball meetup drive. Like we're gonna like donate some turkeys as a high school. Like uh -huh. some of the team wouldn't even go. But he was there. He was like, Oh, I'm here, like yeah. I'm there. Like he wanted to be involved so bad. And he eventually got the starting job. And he eventually got the starting job. That's good. And that's all it takes. You have to really like put yourself out there. Uh -huh. And you don't gotta be like the coach's and you best. have to be consistent too. You yes, have to you have to be consistent. If you want stuff to change. No, you have to be, now, and you can't just, you know, be like a little coach's buddy. You know, you can't like, you have to like uh -huh. work for it too. Like, and yeah. it's good to have a relationship with your coach, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, like to them. Yeah. That's like annoying. It, it's annoying. <laughs> like they're just there for coaching to get the W uh -huh. and to get paid to them. It's, it's technically uh, and to win. 
To win, yeah. to win, yeah. <laughs> to win most importantly. Now, getting paid is nice and all, but you want to win. Like, there's no point of coaching if you can't fucking uh-huh. win. Like, you know, <laughs> that's just how it is. But um, was there anything else you wanted to add on top of that? Like, along, like, obstacles and stuff? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I was going to say something, too. I forgot. I'll bring it back up if no, I remember. No, of course, of course. No worries, man. No worries, of course. And I was going to say, describe, uh, this, this plays a part to this next question. Describe how important it is to be real with yourself, you know, when it comes to like, let's say playing high level comp, like playing high level comp, being a part of like a big, you know, AU team, you know, high school team mm-hmm. and like realizing like, yeah, some of those kids I played, you know, at those field houses, I like, know this respect to them, you know, they're, they're weaker compared, you know, to the, the, these dudes that I'm playing, you know, uh-huh. like I could play this one dude at this local field house, but in this AAU run, there's people dunking and shit there's yeah. people like doing crazy crossovers so uh-huh. i must imagine like the beginning you're like damn like i have to like grind probably even harder like knowing yeah. that these guys could do much more and that's okay. the thing like not i'm gonna bring it up because it's sort of it's sort of relevant to the topic like and we'll get uh-huh. into nba ball later like mm-hmm. it's so like uh, to me of all the pro sports like nba is, v- is by far like the hardest to make it to yeah. only because like there's so many like and we'll talk about Chicago street uh, culture in a bit, like with, with their basketball. So like, there's so many people we've hooped with at like yeah. some of these gym runs, some of these a street of runs uh, so that, that were like D2, D3 at one point, like mm. had an opportunity to play in the NBA or at, at least play in the, in the next level. But it's very hard. Like I, I forgot, there was like this one dude, like averaging six, 16, 17 in college. But just because that one dude jumps a little higher, looks a little bit fancier. Yeah. He's going to get picked over you. And, bro, it's just so tough. So Um, going back to the question I was going to ask, like, it must be, like, a real humbling moment when you saw, like, damn, like, a lot of these guys, like, wanted just as much as me, if not more, for some of them. Like, my coach says, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Like, so basically what he means by that is, like, you basically got to work hard. You got to hustle. You got to go after it. So, like, any little thing, because this is what college coaches and anybody else They'll look at to see, okay, um, what does this guy do better than this guy? So it's like you have to um, make sure every attribute that you have, okay, I'm shooting like this, but it got to be better than this. Okay, my defense, oh, I got to work on it. It could be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, for sure. They, they always look at the small things like, can you understand my game plan? Can you understand like what I'm trying to ask of him? And at the end of the day, like, I'll never forget, like uh, the NFL player I had, uh, Josh Woods. Uh, uh-huh. like, he always like he said he basically applied like the coach always knows best. Like it's not like it's a coach like you know sits you on the bench or like doesn't play you in a certain game or doesn't give you enough minutes. It's not because like you know it's more so favoritism. Uh-huh. Like it could be, but that's very rare. It, it's for it a could, reason. It, it, it's for a reason. And like, if you're close with him, he'll tell you what you need to work on for you to get better in that category exactly like for example like oh like you're not switching on those screens enough you're not like going like yeah. if you're a big man like why are you shooting you know them and threes two, and there's two different types of people they'll either they'll either get mad they'll have an attitude or they'll have a positive attitude and be like okay i got you next time i got you next time i'm gonna switch on that one like i should have switched yeah. yeah a lot of, and that's the thing like i hate i hate saying like this generation because i because i'm a part of the young generation uh-huh. but it, it's very like tough to see like and I know a lot of people that I hoped with, like, they'll have, like, some sort of, like, an attitude like that, you know? Yeah. And I'll tell them, like, like you know, Brody to Brody, like, like there's no reason to flip out like that. Yeah. It's only going to mess up the chemistry. It's only going to mess up uh, focus. I know you mad because you did that, but still have a positive attitude. Get exactly. back on the next play. Get Do back better. on the next play. Clear your mind. And you can't hoop mad. Like, you can't hoop mad. Like, it's impossible. Like, I, I, like, I hooped, like, furious one time because a dude followed me, and it's just not worth it because then I started to take horrendous shots and my shot selections uh-huh. were very poor like so it's all about just like understanding keeping a cool head and like, yeah. and like you said like just hey yo my fault i messed up i should have switched on that one i yeah. could have you know picked up buddy you know half court like that's on me just take that's, it that's what it is nowadays attitude if a coach sees that you don't have great attitude just because of that he won't give you a scholarship or an offer just literally just because of that. Just because of that. And, and it's crucial nowadays. Like, it's crucial. It's not even just talent. Like you said, like, it's the little things. Like, how how do you communicate with your teammates? How do you communicate with me? How do you conduct yourself in class? Like, mm-hmm. that's a big thing, too. Like, yes, it's cool and all, like, to play sports and stuff. And I was going to ask you, like, with, like, you know, basketball and stuff, it's also very important to be on top of, like, studies and stuff. There's Everything. coaches out there, like, they'll be like, 
Yeah, you could average 15 for me, but shit, yeah, if you got yeah, a F. Acad academics. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll get on your ass, and, and, and rightfully so, because imagine if, like, schools didn't have, like, a system based off of that. All right, you could just play to play. Like, bro, like, so many teams would be broken. Like, yeah. there's so many dudes I know, no disrespect to them. Uh, great ballers. Great they, ballers, but it's academics. It's academics. They were slacking. You know, uh -huh. They were very slacking in class, and then they wouldn't get game time. Like, oh, I was supposed to fucking play this game, but I'm like, well, why did you flunk that test? Like, you, yeah. you have to you gotta be on top of your shit. Mm -hmm. The real talk, you have to. Um, what would you say is like uh, now? This, this one I want to hear uh, for sure. I bet. What is your biggest pet peeve in general when hooping with somebody? Like Ooh. during a game, you know, it, it could be like during a school game, AAU run. It could be at a rec run, you know, maybe at an export. Biggest pet peeve? Yeah. Oh, it's like the non-hooper, but like, you know how like the non-hooper, but he has really good defense. He just stays still. He's not even falling for none of your like hezzies or like pump fakes. He's oh, just I there. I hate that shit. Yeah. He's just there. Like, that'd be so annoying. <laughs> I hate that shit. No, I hate that shit. The, the ones that are walls, but it's walls. also it's, brick walls. <laughs> brick walls. It's not even just that. Um, The football players. People know what I mean by that. Uh, yeah. There are some crazy football players in basketball. What I mean by uh -huh. crazy, I don't mean by skill set. I mean yeah. hacking your shit. Like yeah, they will be like pushing you, coming in like running backs into the paint. <laughs> I'm like shit. Like we gotta push call. you out the way. Like dang, like, offensive charging. Like I have my hands up. Like for a reason. <laughs> like damn. But it's not even just that. It's also like people arguing. Uh, this this is the most common one. I hate like this is just like local runs and stuff. But. Uh -huh. I hate when someone says I got next, and then someone else claimed they got next. And, next, and then they that argue. is a big pet peeve. Now that might not be during <laughs> and the then game. They argue because who got next? But man, that wastes so much time. I'm just sitting there so like, much time. Look, bro, why don't y'all just fucking shoot for it, bro? <laughs> he makes yeah. it. He, he got next. He misses. Okay, cool. Whatever. It keeps on going on and on. That that's another pet peeve. I can think of so many uh, big men shooting threes. You see, nowadays yeah. we'll get to them being talk yeah, later. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier. I, I don't now. mind a big man shooting a three if you open. Like, if you're at the uh -huh. top of the key, and like you, a little and, pick and, and pop. And you know he could shoot it. And I well. know you could shoot, like, a little pick and pop, cool. But if you, like, forcing, like, little yeah, threes. Yeah, you 6'10 you trying to shoot a three, like, and you just can't shoot, don't I'm shoot a three. I'm getting mad, bro. I'm getting mad. I'm going to yell at your ass. I'm like, bro, yeah. get your big ass down low. <laughs> like, why are you? Get in the gym and work on it. I want to see you work on it. Exactly. Like, but for right now, go in the paint. <laughs> and and we'll, we will get into that. We will get into it because I definitely do want to talk about how much, like, not even like the pro game has changed, but mm. basketball in general. Overall. Like, because like, I think so much has influenced something like the NBA, NBA Euro ball, everything. Even some like these popular, like, AAU teams and stuff like that. What they do, we take inspiration, like, Steph Curry, like, everybody started to shoot deep ass threes because of uh -huh. Steph, bro. Literally. Like, no look away threes. No look away threes. Like, uh -huh. I started to shoot two because I'm like, shit, I know I can't shoot for shit, uh -huh. but I just want to pull it for some yeah. sort of. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good. I'm just letting it fly. Like, uh -huh. it brick, let it be a brick, like brick foundation. It's cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I, I just want to shoot, you know? And we'll get into more of that later. And um, what are a few goals that you have, like, with basketball, you know, with academics being on top of that? Uh -huh. um, I do want to ask about, you know, like, local high school runs. Now, obviously, for the audience that don't remember, uh, the, for the audience that don't know, we do reside in the beautiful city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, how is the, the season has gone for you so far? Um, and what are the short-term and long-term goals, not only with basketball, but with academics being with that? Uh, so a couple of goals that I have right now is, obviously, I want to be a professional basketball player. I want to go to the NBA. Beautiful. So yeah. I'm just working on that right now. Um, it's my junior uh, junior season, so I still got another uh, year for a senior year, and then I go off to college. I'm still looking into a couple of colleges right now, but um, obviously want to be a professional basketball player ball player if not that if that doesn't work out obviously you got to have a plan b you can't just be like oh i don't have a plan b no yeah no you have to um i would like to work in like the business area or like finance working with money because that's you know the best way that with is money. the best way <laughs> oh easily the best way and it's good that you have a plan b not because like I, what i was trying to do back in the day i wanted to be a professional hooper but i was trying to like go through the ranks i was trying uh -huh. to like first target for europe hoops you'll probably play for somewhere in my home country mm -hmm. but then you know I had like some obstacles along the way, you know, I had yeah. some family stuff, some injuries, and my plan B was you podcasting, be, be realistic. sport journalism. Yeah, you just gotta uh -huh. be realistic with yourself. And sometimes that's a beautiful thing. You're just like, damn, you know, maybe some things are meant to be that way, uh -huh. you know? Like this things is- changed, God did this for a reason. It, God did it for a reason. Like this is my true calling. Like this is where I'm at. This is what's next for me. 
And bro, like er everything will come your way, bro. I'm sure. Like I, mm -hmm. I sense the positive attitude. I sense how bad you want it. And I always tell people too, like, because I've watched like a bunch of like you know videos on basketball and like me studying the sport, mm -hmm. you know, going to school for journalism and yeah. analysis. Like, what I know the most about like basketball is like. It's not even just like trying to like make the NBA. Like you could like still make the pros and yeah, like overseas. Europe, overseas. And I told me like, bro, like you're still a professional. Like if someone told yeah, you me, you still get paid. <laughs> like if someone told me like, hey, I'm a pro in fucking I don't know um, Romania. Like yeah. I'm a I'm a professional <laughs> basketball player in Romania. I'll be like, shit. Like yeah, you're a professional. Like I can't uh -huh. take nothing against you. I'm not uh -huh. gonna say, oh, I'll drop everyone off. No, and the pros thing for is, a reason. And the crazy thing is, they be mad because oh, I'm in Romania. Okay, but you like a professional though in Romania. Some other people don't get that chance to go hoop in Romania. No, exactly. Or I'm any other place. Like a lot of these people that we look like, a lot of these basketball influencers, like ball is life people, they at one point played overseas. They at one point mm -hmm. was on some of those little G League teams uh, in on the TV NBA. or something like that. Exactly. And man, like I, I imagine at some point in the future, like the NBA, I could picture this happening. They have like some sort of developmental system for some people that kind of miss short of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Like kind of similar to like a G League, but like a developmental into the G League. Yeah. Because I really feel like there's so much talent out there on the streets. Like, Chicago, yeah, New York. Definitely. Um, they definitely got to do something like that. Chicago, New York, Atlanta. Like, there's so many. Like, now, now at the end of the day, pro hooper, street hooping. Like, those are two different worlds. Mm. Um, they're not gonna call fucking kicks in the street ball. They're just not gonna do that. You yeah. do. They're gonna be like, <laughs> like why? Like, you know, like why are you calling like kicks in the streets? But, uh -huh. but what I'm trying to get get at is there's so many like talented people on the streets. Like I mentioned earlier, like people mm -hmm. that were D2 M1, people that were yeah. D3 M1. Chicago, I think uh, it just said recently too, that has the most professionals uh, born shit in the city of Chicago for NBA, NFL, like anything. There, there's real <laughs> talent here, like basketball, Literally. baseball, football. Now football, like football for me, is, I'm not going to say it's easy, uh -huh. but on the outside looking in, they have such a big roster yeah. for offensive linemen. Take, you have uh, the kicker. training camp <laughs> roster. Yeah, yeah, they have like two, three freaking rosters. Like NBA yeah. is like, all right, nah, you make this team or you go into the G League yeah. or I'm trading you. It's, uh -huh. it's one of those. Like NFL is like, oh, you could be in our training camp roster. Uh -huh. What the fuck is yeah, that? Oh, no, you roster. only year in training camp. Yeah. During the season, you're straight. I'm like, how's that work? But <laughs> No, you make your way. That's what I'm saying. Like, NBA could come up with some sort of, like, developmental roster. Like, instead of just, like... Because I think the G League has been a success. Yeah, it has. But there's been, like, great hoopers, like, Pascal Siakam from the G League. You know, the crazy thing about Fleet. the G League, though, is I feel like some players been in the G League for so long that they should be moved up to the NBA. Like, why are they still in the G League? And, and it's so tough. And, and that's, like, the brutal world of basketball. Like, sometimes, like, it might be those little things, like, oh, like... Are they coming to the practices early enough? Are yeah. they like saying themselves? The little things it's, that you don't see us people don't see. It's crazy. And, and like, that's what we were trying to get at earlier. Like how you mentioned like the little things and how I was touching on like just going to like to those little basketball meetings. Like even mm -hmm. if the roster doesn't go, if you code, the coach will be like, damn, this dude is showing up to every film room, yeah. every meeting. Everything on time or early. The lunch, like he, he's at practice an hour early. Like they look at stuff like that. Like, same thing when you work at a job. Like if I'm clocking, if, if I'm supposed to start at 9 30 and mm. I'm coming in 8 45, my manager's be like, why the fuck are you here so early? Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, damn, you know, they're here. That shows some discipline. Shows discipline, shows professionalism. And that's like the biggest thing professionalism, how you conduct yourself too. Like we talked about that. If you, if you conduct yourself like some sort of like egomania, like you just yeah. some sort of like arrogant, arrogant, <laughs> like, yeah, bro, you're doing too much. Like no, no one wants to work with you. No mm -hmm. one wants to hoop with you. No one wants to like, Get to know you and 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 it's important, you know. Now you always want to be authentic, be yourself by yeah, all means. Yourself. But just keep in mind, like out there in the real world, like you gotta show a bit of that professionalism. You gotta be humble in certain mm -hmm. moments. Yeah, that's just how I how I look at most of that. And then <clears throat> I was gonna say before proceeding on to the next subject, you know, of uh -huh. NBA hoops and stuff like that. Were there any last things you wanted to say regarding you know? Your basketball journey, anyone you, you would like to think real quick. I know you had some shout outs in the uh, beginning. Yeah. Shout out my trainer, uh, Tay, GFC. Uh, shout out Coach Ron. Um, yeah. No, oh, yeah, shout out, to, shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out. And by the way, you guys, check out uh, Daniel. Link in the description below. His TikTok, his IG shows, do some love. Uh, pretty nice following. Show him some love. Um, Everything is uh, CHI underscore DLO, Sean underscore DLO. Go yep. follow. Yes, sir. Go follow. Everything will be in the link in the description below now. Let's move on to NBA ball, man. It has been a very interesting season so oh. far. Um, so much has been yeah, going on in the NBA, man. You know, they added an in-season tournament. Yeah, crazy. They, they you know, different things. 
there's a lot of different things, you know, Bulls aren't doing good as they once did. It's just a lot is going on in the NBA. But I want to first talk about is um, what have you thought about um, the in-season tournament so far? You know, they decided to do a concept of like, all right, let's make the regular season more watchable. Let's make the regular season more interesting. So they did this in-season tournament. At first, mm -hmm. I thought it was dumb. I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought. At now first it's going to be playing into the GOAT debate and stuff uh -huh. like that. Uh, oh, well, this guy yeah. won two in-season trophies. Like, like bro, like, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. Like, NBA championship in season, you know, what well, vice versa. Uh, however, but yeah. what I'm trying to get at, I thought it was very interesting, and it seemed like it worked. You know, there were good ratings. Yeah. You know, a lot of people tuned in. Um, it gave like teams to compete something for. Like, but I saw that's what I seen. Like when they created this in, se in season tournament, they the players I could see like were like more competitive because some of these other players are have salaries because like each game I think it was like in the semifinals they were getting like 20k for each player and some of those other players don't have high salaries like the stars so the stars are like you know what let me win this for them so their salaries could go up no yeah and and, and that's like the beautiful thing like i'm so like, all right well let me make the regular season interesting let me give these guys something to play for because the regular season is just like okay first half let's go off to a great start and then around the middle of the season we'll rest our starters and stuff like that mm -hmm. and obviously people get upset about that you know um, I, I remember like stuff like, you know, people saying, oh, like this could be my only one NBA ever NBA game I ever go to. Yeah. I'm trying to see LeBron. I'm trying to see KD. And let's say it's, you know, Phoenix versus the Bulls near the end of the season. Yeah. Sun's already clenched. The Bulls tanking. <laughs> um, but let's say, you know, KD is coming in town. He's on the Suns. You're like, oh, man, I could see KD, but he's not playing because they're like, oh, no need to play KD. You know, he's playing the Bulls. Like, we yeah. already made the playoffs. Like he will get upset about that. So now the NBA is doing is like, nah, here's a little tournament. Yeah. I'm going to give y'all something to play for. Like you said, the money, especially like uh -huh. there's guys on that team that are not getting paid, you know, nowhere near as much like yeah, good not, money. Yeah. But not, um, not as near as like the stars and like LeBron. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. Like I'm trying to give an example. Like Kobe White is not getting paid Zach Levine money. Mm -hmm. Like Kobe White yeah. <laughs> has a cool contract, but uh, it's not up there. It's not up there. Yeah. You want to. Work for more of it. It's good exposure too. Yeah, uh, that, that gives some NBA because I noticed that some uh, starting lineups they'll be putting on some players are not using the starting lineup of the regular season. Mm. They'll give them more playing time. You know, try to develop them through the in season tournament. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought the in season tournament was a success, bro. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good too. Like the, the game last night was huge. Yeah, Indiana LeBron Lakers. James won. <laughs> that was crazy. We'll get crazy. to LeBron in a bit, but that was a crazy game. You know, I I, I kind of expect LA to win. You know, none against Indiana. I uh, think future wise, I think they'll be great. I'm you know? surprised Indiana actually made it to the um to the finals. Oh yeah, Tyrese Halliburton is is a dog. He was going crazy. He's a dog. Like being a Kings fan, you know, I'm not sad that we traded him because I told people like Fox and Halliburton can't coexist. I'm not saying like they wouldn't be able to play with each other, but mm. one has to be great without the other. Like. Cause it's either Fox is gonna be that dude or Halburn's yeah. be that dude, and the uh -huh. other ones will be like cool with it. Yeah. So one of them had to works. go. <laughs> yeah, that's why how I feel about Boston. I'm not saying they should blow up. Uh, they should let go of Tatum and Brown. Mm -hmm. Like you keep that. But man, I'm telling people right now, if you give Jalen Brown like his own team, like put him on the Magic or something, I yeah. don't know. Uh, that dude will be averaging be easily crazy, 25, yeah. and, he, and he'll look like an easy superstar. But he sometimes doesn't because he gets overshadowed by Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying like that move had to happen for Halliburton to be like, all right, this is my team. It's like team. the same thing with the Bulls, how like Zach Levine and DeMar, they're like, you can have two stars. You can't be doing too much because DeMar is already that that guy. So Zach Levine's trying to do too much and to be the, like DeMar. <laughs> DeMar, and it just hasn't worked. It just <laughs> hasn't worked. And I, I can't wait to see the next season season tournament. And uh, do you think the Lakers are going to carry this momentum? Do you think the Lakers could win the championship? Oh, no, nah, I don't think so. I they, I think they got a good momentum, but then, like, also you got injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, a lot of old players on that team. Davis is too inconsistent, yeah. man. I don't think um, the Lakers will go that far, honestly. <laughs> no, I just, I think they have talent. I don't think talent do is talent, an issue. Though, I just think they have such consistency issues. Like, uh -huh. not LeBron in particular. You they'll know? be consistent, and then they stop, and then for a long they, minute, and then they pop off. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Lakers, like specifically Anthony Davis, so I get frustrated with the most. Like mm -hmm. one game, the zoo will have like thirty points, fifteen rebounds. Next game, he's injured. Five blocks, and the next game he'll have <laughs> four points, two rebounds, uh -huh. 
two blocks in 30 minutes. And you're just like, how the fuck? Like, did yeah, you, you just, just went off for 30 the other day? Uh, you just went off for 30, not even two <clears throat> nights ago. Uh-huh. Like, and that I think that that's what's going to hurt the Lakers. Because what we saw in the playoffs was when it mattered most, AD wasn't able to show up. It was only LeBron. LeBron's going to show up regardless. Like, yeah. I'm, like he's going to show up. Like, he might make a mistake or two, but it's LeBron. He's like, I'll be there. I, I ain't a big LeBron fan, but I know he's going to be clutch. Like, I know he's uh-huh. not going to, like, mess up. Other dudes on the Lakers, like uh, D'Angelo Russell, uh, like I mentioned, Anthony Davis, like those two particularly are so inconsistent. Austin Reeves is fine. I would keep yeah. Austin Reeves. I wouldn't Austin trade Reeves him. He could hoop. Definitely the next star for the Lakers. He could definitely hoop. Like, you know, he's definitely in the conversation for six man of the year. Like, I'll, I'll put in that conversation with Malik Monk. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, the NBA has been interesting. Like, outside of the Lakers, like, I would say, like, people out the West, it's either going to be the Suns, it could be the Mavs. It could be. I just feel like yeah. they, they're a defensive player too away. The, like the, I'll say the three teams that have like really good players is the Suns. Um, I'm trying to think of the uh not wait Dallas Mavericks. Luca's been going crazy too, and I'm trying to think. The I feel like the Warriors too. They got a solid team. Yeah, it's always that championship pedigree, you know. Say the Warriors because that's like one of my favorite teams. And you can never <laughs> count them out. You just can never count them out. Like Steph, Dre. I know a lot of people like to get on Dre, especially in recent memory. He just hasn't been on like you know, particularly the greatest of uh-huh. you know <laughs> behaviors. But you no, know, still got respect. You know, like what the Warriors bring. They still have the championship pedigree. So like you said, yeah. they are being one of your favorite teams. Um, now they might not seem like title favorites at the moment. Yeah. I'll always concern them title favorites because as long as Steph is, is standing and breathing, yeah, like that team will have a shot at the championship. That's just uh-huh. how good they are. They look for him. That's why they they look for him so he could get shots. And, and I don't even think like the Golden State haven't been like playing that bad this year. I think they they picked up a couple good wins. Mm. I just think what hurts them is their bench wasn't as deep as it once was. They had a very yeah. the back in the day. I remember like it was when like the Warriors and Cavs are going at it. I would get so mad. I would be like, man, like. Well, they can't, I can't even put nobody in because, like, there's nobody there to help them. No, like, there's no... And at that time, like, when the Warriors are rotating in, I'm like, man, bro, I hate... And I hate the Warriors so much because their team was so good. Like, you would see Real Steph good. coming off the court with Clay, like, oh, my God, we're straight. Yeah. Now coming off is Iguodala, Sean Livingston. Like, hold uh-huh. on, hold on. Where do you get these role players from? Uh-huh. Like, now they don't really have, like, role players like that. I think their best pro- role player now is, Sean like, Levingston was good, though. And Andre Iguodala, Sean Levingston was killing it in the middle range. He, he was killing it. And, killing man, it. if he didn't have that early injury back in the day uh, for the Clippers, he would have been, like, he could have had, like, a good uh, individual yeah. career. He could have yeah. had, like, some accolades and stuff. But he still came back, won himself a ring. No, he was a dog. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, Golden State, they don't have, like, Dogs like that off the bench, like, and to me the bench is so important. Like, I know we were talking earlier mm-hmm. about like, oh, gotta like, have a deep bench. The bench is not being that good, but bro, like, if you have a good role on the bench and like you known as like, like Lou Will for example, like that mm-hmm. dude always came off the bench because he was like that spark plug. Like, yeah. Current example, Turned I love everything up. <laughs> Current example, Malik Monk for the Kings. Like, as soon as D Fox comes out, I'm going to throw Malik and he'll get the uh-huh. buckets because you need that and guy. He's going to start going. Exactly. Lakers. All right. LeBron is coming out, but we straight because now we have not seeing Austin Reeves this to LeBron's level, uh-huh. but I got someone I could count on to hold down the fort for yeah. a bit so LeBron could get his rest. Not too many teams nowadays have a good bench, man. They don't. They'll, they'll focus so much on the starting lineup. They'll put the starting lineup on the bench, and then once the bench players come in, then everything starts to like fall apart. And then there's no cohesiveness. Like there's, there's no development. So I was going to say, like, I would say modern day NBA wasn't as good as old NBA. I feel like old NBA was better. I'm not saying like 90s NBA. I wasn't born at that time. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? But, but or, like, Paul George Pacers, you know, Melo on the uh-huh. Knicks, you know, when D-Rose on the yeah. Bulls. I feel like basketball was better at that point. Because mm, it was more it was, intense. It was about development. Let me have a good bench. It was intense, like you mentioned. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I care about more of the team. Yeah. Now they don't really do that. They it's don't just care. Like, They're like, okay. Best team. Yeah. Uh, that's what the, like, I just got money. I don't care. They, they don't care. <laughs> like, money, it's just about putting whatever they can together. Like, the Clippers. Like, I'm worried about them because I'm a big Westbrook fan. Mm. And they got Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi, and fucking PG. That's yeah. another tough team I forgot too, yeah. And, and they are a good team, but the only way that the only way that team is going to work is, all right, Russ off the bench, Harden, Kawhi, PG in the lineup. Because you can't yeah. put all four of them into one lineup. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. 
and, and I remember a crazy quote. They asked PG Tucker the other night, and I had to look it up. I thought it was a meme, mm. um, but they asked him like um, about his DMPs. You know, not averaging the points he did before. Yeah, and I think they did address it, but he was like, "There was only one ball, and only plenty of players can only move it around." And he said yeah. something like that. Uh. So he was basically saying like, "Bro, like, how can I get any action?" If you got four ball dominant dudes uh-huh. and one line, you gotta look for them. You gotta look for them, and so like I, I like play some, your role. Mm-hmm, you like how you said, play your role. Like I just don't think like Ty Lue has the roles designated yet. I think they have potential. Like <clears throat> Russ, six man, everybody else starting. Mm-hmm. Like they they could win the championship. But at the same time, it's like fuck. Like I don't know, bro. I yeah, just don't are trust. They gonna be Harden. able to work for each other. You have to work for each other. <laughs> I don't trust Harden. <laughs> I don't trust him, man. Harden is like, gonna do a little ISO. Ten leg dribble, step back. It goes in, but then sometimes you be tweaking. I so bullshit. And I know like <laughs> he's made like a lot of like fans unhappy along the way. Yeah. Like he's rubbed Brooklyn fans the wrong way. Especially um, the way he acts too. Oh my God. Like so much. I know. Not a, going to the, uh, when he was playing for Philadelphia, he wasn't going to the training, I think. Oh yeah, practices. bro. Oh yeah. my God. And Philly fans, bro. They don't play around about that shit, bro. Yeah. Like if they hear like the smallest thing about you, like, oh, like, I don't I don't give a fuck about practice or something, they yeah. will boo you out the arena. Now, Harden is not as much say uh-huh. as Ben Simmons. Like there's no yeah. way near. I'm sure oh, when Harden comes into boo. town, he's definitely here boo. It's not like Ben Simmons boos, but uh-huh. Philly's gonna remember that. They'll be like, okay. Okay, yeah. I remember you ditching Joel like that. I remember uh-huh. you ditching Tyrese Max like Wanted that. To leave. Philly fans are don't forget shit like that, bro. They don't. They do not like they're the same with OKC fan. Well, OKC, I guess, somewhat forgave KD since uh, I personally would have, wouldn't yeah. have. But <laughs> at some point, at some point, you do have to let it go. But Philadelphia, bro, they don't let it go, bro. They'll remember um, you till the you end of time. You think Miami's still mad at LeBron? It's like I don't know, because now that he's like all the way at the top, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I want y'all to, come, I want LeBron to come to the Miami and come play for us," you know. So it's like, are they still mad? I would say there are some people that might feel a certain way. I wouldn't uh, say mad. But they're like, damn, you know, we had something going on in Miami, but you just yeah. left to go back uh-huh. to Cleveland. And I actually love that, actually. I'm glad he went back to Cleveland yeah, at the I'm time. Yeah, i that, too. I think that, that was it's so iconic. Decision. It was a better decision. Made it basketball fun again. Like, everyone had, like, their own team. Miami, D-Wade, LeBron, Cavs, OKC, mm-hmm. Westbrook, KD, Spurs, Tim Duncan. You know, like, yeah. everyone had their own Solid team. teams. Yeah, everyone had to have one, maybe two superstars. Now it's, like, two, three superstars per team. And it's just crazy. That's why I like mm. the old NBA a little bit more. And I was going to also ask um, with NBA ball, like going, talk about the Bulls real quick. Oh. <laughs> it's sad, bro. <laughs> Very sad. We are pretty shit, bro. Like, I don't mind saying that. Like oh. I said, I like on my sports show, my TikTok. We're just not good, bro. We're just not good. And, you know, for Chicago standards, like uh-huh. we've lowered it. Like for me, when I think about Chicago all of our basketball. Teams were dogs. All of our teams were dogs. All of our teams were dogs. Like, when I thought about Chicago basketball, like, I thought about people that, like, wanted the game, you know, that, like, it. I know some people like to, like, roast and, like, make a meme of, like, for example, Carl's Boozer. Uh-huh. But, bro, <laughs> like, he hustled. Like, I, yeah. that was just someone I remember, like, growing up, like, man, you know, he wasn't that nice with it. Uh-huh. But, but he, he hustled, wanted bro. it. He yeah, hustled. He wanted it. When I look at Chicago, I'm like, damn, bro, like, who, who hustles on yeah, this? Who team? wants like, it that bad? <laughs> that's why I think we suck, bro. Like, cause the, I think the only dude that wants it is Damar. Yeah, that's what I. Think Everyone too. else like just looks out of tune. I like Io, Chicago kid. Uh-huh. I like his potential. Um, I like Kobe White. He's been playing better. Yeah, Kobe but White everybody else better. they just don't look in sync. Like, they don't just look so. What is it's wrong like with Bulls basketball, there. man? Like, what do we gotta do? Do we trade Zach? Do we blow it up? Um, I think honestly they would have to uh trade Zach Levine. For to get better trades. Because I feel like Zach Levine, like I said earlier, he's trying to be like DeMar too much. He's doing too much. You don't have to do all that. You're, you're, you're good. You're both two star players, right? Look for each other. Why are y'all trying to compete against each other? And obviously you could compete against each other, but like y'all making it seem like, I don't know. I feel like they would have to trade him to get some more better picks. Be- better pieces. Yeah, better pieces. Better assets, team. like picks, like for the draft. Because... And also, like, speaking of the draft, our draft with the NBA has been particularly well. Like, the Bulls drafting decisions, like, we drafted Dale and Terry. We don't use them. Uh-huh. We traded up to trade uh, to draft Patrick Williams, and I gave it time. 
Because I hate this little excuse. Like, oh, certain players deserve time. Now, I'm not expecting... I didn't expect Patrick Williams on his debut season to get fucking 40 points. I didn't mm-hmm. expect that. No. <laughs> like, I'm not expecting that from him. But, holy shit. If I draft you in the top 10, I got to see some sort yeah, of jump at some point. Go full force. When I hear when I hear he's like, oh, I'm trying to get paid to something. Then you just worried about the money. Not, and you don't deserve two something. You don't deserve <laughs> no two two hundred million. You deserve fucking two dollars. Like <laughs> the way you were hooping. Like uh-huh. I like Patrick Williams. Like I don't mean to shit on dude. You know. Uh-huh. Yeah. He made it to the NBA for a reason. He's got there he's to there, that point. Yeah. Like he go hoop. I'm not saying he's a scrub. Well, he he is playing like one. But yeah. that's not the like. I just hate how we made these weird decisions and it just affected us as a team. Mm. Like and, it changes. Like it doesn't seem like. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. And I like where we're at compared to with our previous coaches, like after Tom Thibodeau. But again, there's so much that could be approved this team. And like you said, I'll go out to the market. All right. I'll get here. Zach Vooch, Kobe White. Mm. Um, you know, to make things more uh, interesting. I haven't throw Cruz on the table. All these dudes are on clearance sale. Whatever y'all want, give us the best thing in return. Yeah. Like, Championship teams would want a Caruso. Championship teams would want a Levine. Yeah, Caruso championship been teams, going crazy too. Championship teams would want like you know a Vucevic if they're missing a big in the lineup. You know mm-hmm. that we got some pieces to get something in return. Yeah, it's a matter of when are we gonna pull the trigger, and we gotta we pull that. the trigger soon. Like I don't mind if we just blow it blow it up and we just trade everybody. Mm-hmm. Like I don't mind being shit again. Like because when was the last time we were actually good? Like it's been ages. It's been like. A minute. It's been a minute. Like, yeah, we were cool last year. You know, we had yeah, some. last year was that last year that was doing decent. But fuck, like I'm talking about like deep playoff yeah, run. Deep. City was on their feet. Like uh-huh. it was probably when D Rose was on the Bulls. Literally, when he hit that crazy shot against the Cavs. Crazy. Jimmy Butler was here. Uh, Gasol, like all those guys <clears> are dogs. <throat> now who we have now? Patrick Williams, Torrey uh-huh. Craig. Like yeah. these guys go hoop. But it's just like there's nothing special about them. And yeah, you can't say that they're a championship team. Nah, nowhere near, bro. Like we're, realistically, we're an in-season championship team. But we're not no NBA yeah. championship team because the in-season tournament. I'm not saying any team could win it, bro. Uh-huh. If the Indiana Pacers could yeah, make it that it, far, it, it bro, was against Lakers, like then the Bulls, you know, they are they sweeping four. Like it's, it's not <laughs> Cancun and three. Like they're, they're gone. The Bulls, yeah, it's it's wraps. It's just tough. Chicago sports in general, baseball is not even that hot right now. Nah, football is just bad. pretty bad. Well, football is always bad. Like the Bears, it's always next year. It's, it's always, always next, next year. year. No, yeah. And like <laughs> I'm more of an NBA guy. I love football, but it's just funny to troll Bears fans. Like uh-huh. I want the Bears to do well as a Chicago. Yeah, obviously. But I just think it's so funny. Like because. They would go to grocery stores, get a bunch of beer, like, oh, bear down. Like, yeah. we're going to go fucking crazy this year. And you don't. Like, you, you, yeah, you, it, just, it just doesn't happen. You're, you're <laughs> shit of shit in the NFL. Like, you're, you're, you're the worst team in, in America when it comes to sports. Like, I feel like eventually, though, like, I feel like the Chicago sports teams will go back to how they used to be. It I has to. Like, like yeah. man, like, I'm not saying we're New York. Like, obviously, New York is always going to get us a little overhyped. But we're Chicago, man. Like, yeah, like you, like you said, bring up the Bulls, Michael Jordan, you know. D Rose, dogs. D Rose, dogs. Michael Jordan changed the game. Rodman, Pippen, like, when you think about the Bears, you'll think about Peyton, you'll think about, uh, yeah, we have iconic characters. Like, New York, they have iconic characters, but when I think about the Knicks, it's not going to be like how I think about MJ for the Bulls. Knicks, uh, Carmelo. Like, no, Uh like, cool, but like, was he really that memorable compared Uh to like. That he actually changed the game. Exactly. And now, so. I feel like that's what Chicago's missing. We don't have any of those guys right now. Like, as a city, you know, we're always going to be good for our music. We're always going to be good for our food. You know, that's not a debate. Mm-hmm. But, but mm-hmm. our sports is just down bad right now. Yeah. It is. I would say the only thing right now, I don't even watch hockey for real. But from what I heard from, like, people that do watch hockey, like, the Blackhawks are cool. Like, they got something going on, rebuilding. But, again, we're, everyone's rebuilding. The Bulls suck. Bears suck. Mm-hmm. Cubs suck. <laughs> I like the Sox, but they suck, too. Um <laughs> You said baseball earlier. Are you more of a Cop- Cubs fan or a Sox fan? Oh, that's a hard one. I'm mostly a Cubs fan. Mm. But, like, like at some point, I'm like, you know what? I love both teams, you know, because I'm from Chicago. Oh, well, yeah, of course. I love yeah. both teams. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll never get the notion, like, Sox fans going to get mad when the Cubs win. Like, bro, like, <laughs> you're in Chicago. Like, I get it. Like, you know, it's, it's that inner city rivalry. But, mm-hmm. like, 
You think Laker fans would get... Actually, that's a bit different. Lakers yeah. don't like the Clippers <laughs> at all. <laughs> Lakers they do don't. not like the Clippers. No, Clippers are just weird. They're a weird franchise. Uh-huh. Like For the longest. Like, you would think, damn, they haven't won a championship yet? <laughs> I, like, think about it. Like, the Clippers I at one point... When's the last time they won a championship? Never. They won it never? No. I don't like, think so. The Clippers never won it because... Dang. And they had chances. You had Chris Paul in Lob City. Yeah. That didn't work. You then uh, <laughs> tried to you know, build around Blake. It still didn't work. Uh-huh. You then bring in uh, Kawhi and PG. You're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. easy champions. And they, they needed, got skunked they in the bubble. They needed bench, though. Like you was talking about earlier. They needed a deep bench and, and during that time. Yeah, bro. And we're going a bit uh, all over the place. But I also quickly, like, um, in the topic of Chicago um, mm-hmm. with hoops and stuff, I Man, I love our hooping culture here. You know, obviously, you know, we could talk about how bad the pro sports teams are, but we talk about how there's a lot of like hoopers like on the streets. Yeah. I remember like Steve Nate said something cool about like reviving the NBA dunk contest. Like they should get dunkers, like, the best dunkers around America from the streets, from rec gym yeah. and stuff like that. And I think that would be a I cool concept. Be, I feel like more better because nowadays some of the NBA players are some like they'll do really good dunks, but they're like like John Morant. He was like, I need a meal to go do the dunk. You should yourself, like, should be, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do the dunk then. Why you need a, another million dollars, you know? You, you make your money off Nike, People want to see, yeah, people want to see you do the dunk contest. Why not do it? Exactly. And I think that's, like, how I, like maybe Adam could do something with the dunk. I was like, you no, know, throw some money in there. But it's going to come down to, like, how bad, like, some of those dudes want it. And I'm not, and like, there might not be better hoopers, but, man, I've seen some crazy dunkers like around crazy Chicago. Dunkers. Like you've seen them on TikTok, um, YouTube, everywhere. YouTube, Instagram reels, like there there are some crazy dunkers. Like like the other night I seen this one dude like do like a whole like three sixty, like I don't know how, but yeah, crazy. it was it was like a lot, but I'm just like, man, like some of these dudes like would put on a show. <laughs> show for a, a show, like do some di- do some different dunks that NBA players can't even do. Yeah, and I've seen like street dunkers like do shit like where I I can't even think of an NBA player I'd be able to do it. So I was gonna say like, man, like I feel like the NBA should look at the like the streets a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of like good time. I would say specifically Chicago, (coughs) New York, Atlanta. Uh Um, I I have a let's look into the streets more. Yeah, I I believe I have a. I know somebody in Florida. I have a cousin in Florida, so Mm -hmm. I he he tells me about the comp in Florida. About the basketball people out there, there's good street like well, hoopers street out ball. there. Yeah, I just feel like the NBA has to look into it a little bit more. Yeah, like maybe do like a little outdoor event in the summer, like of like street hoopers, and then uh-huh. like whoever like wins a tournament, some of them gets rewarded a G League tryout. Yeah, that's a what G I was about League to contract. Say, a G, like G League tryout. What, what would you think about that idea? Do you think the NBA should expand that for the streets? Yeah, I think they should do that because then I feel like you know somebody who's just been in the cut that you haven't seen, you know, who's really good could get that opportunity to hoop at a higher level, you know? Oh, yeah, because like, like like I said, like we said earlier, there's so many dudes that we've known and we hooped with. Like, Chicago's a small world, by the way. It's a very small world. <laughs> we know, all, we both of us know a lot of hoopers around here. And we, know, and we know a few that were D2, that were D3, mm-hmm. or even D1 at one point. But it just got, you know, too tough. Whether it was school, it could have been maybe, you Life. Know, life financially maybe an injury so that's why it's like i want setback not having a second chance to a little tournament like you know how they do with the end season like not having a tournament to get on a g-league team like oh shoot like like a tryout yeah, system my chance you know to actually show out they need to expand on that I, I i i genuinely believe the nba should take the opportunity yeah and i feel like th- there's more dogs too you know because they want to show out there's like i got something to prove you know and then when they play that high level player who's like, you know what, I'm good skillfully. Like like I said earlier, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Those other players who work hard will beat them. They will beat them. They will beat them. And huh. man, like some of these dudes could still real life make it. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. NBA should think of something like that. And I would love for Chicago to be a part of that. Because we have a lot of talented like athletes here. We really do. Definitely. Especially in basketball. Oh my God. Like Especially in basketball, none against like our football players here, mm. baseball players. I think is phenomenal, but we have some crazy good basketball players. Crazy from the city of Chicago. Like, I'm thinking like NBA pros outside D Rose, like the Pat Beverleys of the world, yeah. Anthony Davis, Anthony uh, Davis. Oh, I'm trying to think. Jabari Parker uh, was in the Brunson. league at one point. Uh, Jalen Brunson, yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, Illinois kid. Um, 
Javon Carter uh, plays for the Bulls currently. He's from Maywood, I believe. Javon Carter, um, yeah. Also, Chicago and like there, there's a good uh, there's a good amount like Taylor Horn Tucker even from Illinois in general too people from <laughs> Illinois Taylor Horn Tucker that's another one a lot of people Kendrick know Taylor Horn Tucker yeah um, DJ Stewart coming from Whitney Young how uh, he's trying to you know make his way you know I, I think last yeah, time I, I checked play, he's a dog too he's a dog I think he's on the Kings uh, G League team at one point you know yeah I'm pretty sure so he's actually on right now for the G League I'm pretty sure he's playing with the Boston Celtics Boston League. Celtics yeah I think and, it's called Maine. And bro, like you just, he's gonna keep chasing at those opportunities, and man, like some point they're gonna they're gonna land that roster spot, bro. Yeah, they're gonna land that roster spot. Like we said earlier, if you keep going to those extra meetings, those little like scrimmages, like uh -huh. they will call keep you up. Out. Real life, yeah. So I can imagine like the DJ Stewart's of the world. At some point, he will get that official roster spot, and I, and I root for him. You know, as a Chicagoan, you know, I want to see our people like truly succeed. And do great things. I, I I do, and I just think like nowadays, and we could get into, we could get into that topic in the end of the show about like how people could be negative nowadays and stuff like that, mm. and how to tune them out. But we'll get into that just a bit. You want to see people from Chicago do great things, like you want to see them succeed. It feels good, you know. Oh, he's from Chicago, you know. I could be like that. I could do the same thing he's doing. Exactly, and you want you want to be on a big stage, whether it's music, sports, comedy, um, anything in the in like in the business world. Like, oh man, like. That dude like went to my school, like he went, he mm. went to you know, yada yada yada, like yeah. it's a beautiful thing, bro. It's a beautiful thing. And before we go, and before we go into the ending subjects of the show, I do want to talk about one last thing with the NBA. This will be a funny one. I, I just, okay. man, I want to know like where you stand with LeBron. Like, why do people hate him so much, especially in our generation? Like, no <coughs> one likes LeBron. Like, well, I'm not gonna say no one completely. Uh -huh. But, like, you get what I'm saying. Like, no one just doesn't like dude. Uh, I'm going to say some negative things about him, and I'm going to say some positive things. The negative things I'm going to start off with is how he acts. Like, he acts like a baby sometimes. Like, and then the things, like, he, he does, like, he didn't make great moves. Like, you know how he was in Miami, then he went back to Cleveland. But he just, like, left, completely left, you know? And the people are like, dang, you're going to just leave us like that? So I'll say those are, the, like, a couple negative things. That's his attitude. Um... And then the positive things about him, like, you can't be mad at him for doing great things. No, oh. He's the number one scorer in the league. Oh, yeah. He's beat a lot of records, you know. He's won a lot of championships. I think he, more than Jordan now, right? More mm -hmm. championship rings. Like, you just can't be mad about that. You know, he's changed the game as well as Michael Jordan. So, you can't be mad at him for that. I don't know why people still hate him now. Because I had to realize it, too, because I didn't like him. But he, you have to realize he's done a lot of good things. He's done so much. Like, I like. I'm not the biggest fan of him either. Um, there are a lot of things that he does that just kind of sets me the wrong way. But <laughs> flopping, flopping, <laughs> uh, just whining a lot. Um, and even like, how do I say? Like, it's not his fault, uh -huh. but his fan base gets me mad. <laughs> Debating with LeBron fans, like uh, they're like, oh yeah, Michael Jordan's better. Oh uh, my god, dude. stats and all that. Check the stats. Check the stats. And they'll always look at stats and stuff like that, but they won't even actually look at the context of the situation, like what was going on during that time. And I, and I love LeBron. I love LeBron. But if you're gonna hype up a championship win in the bubble, I'm uh -huh. sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tolerate that yeah. because nothing against the bubble. You know, I'm sure uh -huh. it was very hard to hoop without your family and stuff yeah. like that. But if you think like, but, but everyone well, the players is also the sick. They're not. They don't feel the same. They're not hundred percent. You know, like bro, like, like we're we're flexing the bubble championship like, again. Like he won the championship. I'm not gonna take it away from him. Mm -hmm. But there's little instances like the fan base of LeBron. Yeah, they will like overhype that achievement to make it seem like I, I won't be surprised today. Yeah. Well, after this episode done, I I didn't log in today on my social media because uh -huh. I don't like logging in most of the time. I only do it for business. Uh -huh. But when I do log in. <laughs> And I see people be like, oh, my God, like, he has four NBA championships, one in the season tournament, better than Jordan. Like, right. if well, I you see, go to the comments and like, if I see some shit like that, bro, like, I'm, I'm, I'm logging off. It gets me mad. It gets me mad because it's just like, we can't be saying stupid shit. And, uh -huh. like, I get it. Like, it's social media. Like, you know, it's America. Like, 2000. Yeah, people have their favorite players. Um. <laughs> yeah, like, everyone has, like, the favorite players. Like, everyone, like, for me, like, I, I'll ask you that, like, your favorite NBA players to watch. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, like... I like players that like don't say too much, you know. Yeah, like, humble, humble, you know, respectful, like, respectful. Like for example, I love Jalen Brown, could uh -huh. hoop. I love Darren Fox, could hoop. Um, 
Luca reminds me of LeBron with how he can whine sometimes too. Yeah. But I love Luca. Luca, yeah. you know, he does what he does. He know he could do it too. Exactly. And he's humble. LeBron be forcing some shit sometimes, bro. Like he be uh, thinking he a shooter for real, and uh, he's not. Like that, he's like, I'm, I'm, I've done it, so I'm just pull it. No, yeah, there's so many little things about LeBron I could say, but yeah, man, I, I but I will say this, I, I appreciate LeBron in the sense that, like the people like back in the day, like you know my pops and stuff like that, like your mm -hmm. pops, like everyone back in the day at some point, like they're like, hey, in our area, Jordan was our goat, you know, early Kobe, yeah, and then. For us, it was, you could, like, some people won't recognize it, but it's true. Like, if we were to say who's a GOAT of this era, like, this generation, it's LeBron. It's not even close. Yeah. Like, I love Kobe, but when we were getting born and raised, like, we didn't catch, like, the early parts of Kobe. We only caught, like, the mid-late of his career, little, you know? Like, late glimpse. Yeah, late glimpses of Kobe, you know? So, we still got to see Kobe, you know? We still got to see him rest mm -hmm. in peace, but... R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, it just... But LeBron, though, like, we saw, like, his journey, you know, Cleveland, uh -huh. Miami. And he's still in the game. Still <laughs> in the game, still involved. <laughs> the man. oldest in the league, too. Oldest in the league. Like, it's crazy when you think, like, damn, like, the dude's been in the league since 2003. Uh -huh. Like, that's crazy. 20 years, man. Two decades. And 24 soon. Like, like 20, 20, 20, 24, it's uh -huh. a mark, like, 20-some years. Like, yeah, he wants to play with Bronny, so that's, you know, you know. How long that's gonna be? I think it's probably gonna be like a year or two. Oh, he's waiting for Bronny for yeah. sure. Yeah, he's he, he gonna wait for Bronny, and I think he'll make his debut uh, Today, like this actually. season. Yeah, right. yeah, he's gonna make his debut. Um, and I can't wait to see that. I think that's gonna be like you know, it's gonna be a, you know, fun basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, he's probably gonna play about a year or two in college, and he's going straight to the NBA. No, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. And I was gonna talk about uh, college ball a little bit. I wanted to bring the subject up. Um, it seems like nowadays, like Europe. Ball has been developing really well. Yeah, it has. and I I think that's the case because like with guys like Luca and stuff like that, they went up against guys that were legit competition stuff. Mm -hmm. So you look at Bronny and stuff coming out of college. Like I'm not saying they're not gonna come out great players, but man. If Bronny like start off his career playing for let's say Real Madrid, like oh. overseas <laughs> basketball, like he will learn so much more about the game compared to things. college. Yeah, and something against the college system, but like, by any means, like nothing like, against. Like how Victor Wembanyama was playing overseas, right? He was playing overseas. Yeah, he was playing. Then, he came from overseas. Yeah, and, yeah, and then he came to the NBA. He's like, oh yeah, this is easier. <laughs> it is, and, and and also like Lamelo got like Lamelo Ball. Like he came from Australia. Like uh -huh. he played Lithuania a little bit, then went to Australia, and then came here, yeah. and. And something against the Dukes of the world, the Kentuckys, you know, some of those big programs, you know, they got great basketball minds. But in terms of development, like, at the end of the day, like, college ball, like, you're playing against, like, not kids, but, like, uh -huh. like young adults, you know, like, in Europe, like, yeah. I'm going up against some seven-foot bearded dude, yeah. like, in Beast. Russia, like, <laughs> down low, like, overly aggressive as shit, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> They will learn so much more off that because they're like, yeah. damn, okay, now okay, I got to get ready. I see what I could do to work with. I see. Exactly. That's why, and I was going to ask, like, do you think the uh, American college could catch up with Europe at some point? Or do you think it's somewhat impossible considering, like, pro-Europe and overseas, like, it's legit comp. And for us, it's more, like, student comp, friend comp. Like, what, what do you think? Maybe they could catch up, but that's kind of hard, though, because, like, when you're comparing college, you know, to um, Europe and stuff like that, like how the USA team kept on losing to like the other teams because the other teams were like, um, we're tired of losing to the USA team. So like Puerto Rico had to like turn it up, those other teams. So I think, I don't know. I think they would say, I would say um, they might catch up. They could. It's hard though. It's going to be very hard. Like if they had like maybe like time to time in the summer to do something fun, like, Cause they're learning the Europe and the other teams, the overseas teams are learning different things than what the college hoopers are doing. Yeah. College hoopers is more like fundamental stuff. Like well, I wouldn't say <coughs> fundamental, but it's more like simplistic stuff and, and, and stuff like that with, with Europe. It's mm -hmm. so much more like fundamentals. This is the big comp that we're going up against. You know, yeah. the arena is crazy. The crowd crazy. Like, I remember Jokic saying, like, oh, brother, like, I play in Serbia. And, like, you see, like, a little video. Yeah, I'd be seeing clips, and like, the entire the audience fans going crazy. Like, Flames in the, in the crowd, like, dang. The student know, section is literally the whole thing. <laughs> like, singing, jumping up and down. Like, uh -huh. you don't see any NBA. And I love, and I love our crowd atmosphere. You know, I love, you know, basketball fans. But 
Last of Us America compared to Europe, it's not even close. Yeah, like, stop. They take that shit with everything. Seriously. <laughs> like, if they lose a game, they lost their job, they lost their life. Like, yeah, that's what it means. Everything. <laughs> like, UK soccer fans especially. Like I, like, I have this one friend, you know, he's a freaking uh, Everton fan. And, um, and he's like, man, like, I'm having a rough day. I'm like, why, bro? Like, Mm-hmm. beautiful outside and he's like oh bro nice my, day yeah, my team lost like i'm like dude like what the fuck like, they ain't paying you like uh-huh. <laughs> they lost like bro like i get that shows I, dedication real like real fans real fans bro real, real fans. fans like I, we got real fans too but they're like oh they sometimes it's be, different <laughs> they they be bipolar bro like one day bulls fans love exactly the next day oh get his ass out of chicago you know uh-huh. like make up your mind like, yeah you can't like you can't pick one or, uh-huh. you gotta pick one or the other but i was now uh but talking about LeBron, talking about street culture, we, we covered a lot, you know, with the basketball world. Um, to round up, like, uh, the show, like, how important do you think it is, like, for guys like us, you know, grinding, you know, you with basketball and me, with journalism, uh-huh. like, to, to hear your insight, how important do you think it is to, like, block out the noise, block out the hate, block out the naysayers? Because nowadays, man, like, especially with how much social media has grown, mm. it's very easy for someone, like, any of us, to see a comment to see like some sort of post like directed towards us or whatever yeah and like it we may think it's like oh i don't care like i don't give a shit but like we'll we'll get flustered regardless so i think yeah. important it is to like just tune that stuff out because a lot of people like do struggle with it and mm-hmm. like i told people yeah it's as simple as they just, keep worrying about it yeah it's as simple as just keep doing you and stuff like that but what do you think about like today's times? Because it, it it is very toxic times for sure. Yeah, with me, um, I would say you just gotta like tr- like try to ignore it. If there's something like of you, just like just you gotta like, I don't know. For the people who like keep looking at that negative stuff, like I would tell them like, do like don't look at social media. Like people are just saying that so they can see your reaction. You know, see like how you feel and stuff. Like literally the other the, the other day, um. They they said something in the crowd. Crowd it was a uh, pretty funny, and I was like, you know what? Like ignore it. Like why, and just shoot this free throw and make it. Why why is that gonna uh, mess up my game? You know, it's all about positive energy. Ignoring the hate, it's just their opinions. You know, it's opinion. It, that's exactly at the end of the day. Like it's all opinion based. Like some of these people, real life, like yeah, like just, why would I care about what you got to say about me? It ain't factual. Like what you said, like <laughs> like. We've heard we've heard so many like uh, you know with you hooping and stuff like that. We've heard so many of those like oh you, you suck or you're ass mm-hmm. or like. And the crazy thing is too, I had to realize that I had to change this because I think it was like my sophomore year. I was playing against Taft actually, Lakeview versus Taft. A uh, crazy game. We actually we lost. Did like, we lo- oh we won. Surprise. Yeah, we lost pretty bad. But that's because we also had a young team too. Right. So we wasn't like fully developed yet. And yeah, we lost, I think, by like 30 or something like that. But they were like talking crazy in the crowd and I was letting it get to my head, you know, and 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 then like going through like the months, you know, just maturing. um, I had to realize like that doesn't matter, you know, Uh, like uh, I got You got to be unbothered. You know, this is my homie's brand. UNB be unbothered, unbothered. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I like I like that a lot. I like that. I, I like that. I think that's very dope. And I think what you said was beautifully well said. You have to block it out, bro. Because if yeah. you don't, then it's just going to get in the way of like what you want, like what uh-huh. you're trying to do. And I tell people all the time, like if life wasn't like so like crazy of obstacles, like we wouldn't learn shit. Like we're going to have days where we have people that are like extra towards us. We're going to have days where we hear some stuff we don't want to hear. Mm. We're going to have like those, like those low moments. But yeah, I think that's like the beauty of it. Like people don't embrace it enough. You got to like, be able to learn from things. Exactly. If, if we had like a good day every day, like mm. if we didn't hear any of those naysayers, if we didn't go through any like negative yeah. extra shit, we wouldn't learn nothing about life, bro. Mm, that ass. Literally. Like if we like, like I you said, see everything so perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like you, 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 you learn from shit, and it's very cliche to say, "Oh, you learn from your mistakes," but it's very true. You also learn from what goes on every single day. So, Life. when someone shits on you, like, kind of take that as a lesson. Like, damn, like maybe I shouldn't care too much about what they say. Uh-huh. Like, we learn everything new every day, bro. And I yeah. think we have to take that, especially for our generation. I'm gonna forget about this like ten years later. Like, why would I care about this now? <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly, and and that's the whole truth. Like, it's literally the truth. We just can't like let like those naysayers get to us, no matter what it is. And mm-hmm. like, sadly, like I love Chicago to death, but like the city does have like 
fairly amount of negative people. Like, I love yeah. the city. I love the city. You know, I think there's some beautiful people, people that mm -hmm. motivate one another. But I do know a few that are just like assholes. Yeah. <laughs> they're, like, they're just straight up like weird for no reason. But mm -hmm. this is the times we live in. Yeah. And, and like I said, we just have to embrace it. Because people, living. sometimes people go through those hard for like, 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 how would I say this? Like, they go through like a hard life. Mm -hmm. So they don't like, some of them just don't know how to like be more positive. You know, they don't like experience a lot of positivity. And you, obviously you could change that, you know, you just got to be around more positive people. You have to. And, and that's the key. I remember one of my earlier episodes, like my, my friend, uh, Alex, HW Alex, shout out to him. Um, he was talking about like how you have to surround yourself with the right sort of people. You mm -hmm. know, like whether it's you trying to like, you know, make it in basketball, whether it's you trying to make it a music, podcasting. So not just so with people that like have the same goals you, as that you. have the same goals that you maybe not the same exact goals uh -huh, but that like, wants to succeed. They want to like do you. something. Yeah. Yeah, they want to do something like you. They'll give you like criticism. Like I told like like I have my one friend uh, like like I mentioned with Alex, like uh -huh. he'll send me, hey yo, uh Tark, what do you think about uh the the, the song I made? Yeah. And as a homie, I'm gonna give him my, my straight yeah, up straight up opinion. Straight up crit criticism. Yeah, I'm gonna criticize, give give my opinion, you know, give, give my heartfelt thoughts. Cause nowadays people will be like, oh, what do you think of this? And they'll take whatever good thing they hear. They'll oh, like, it yeah, sounds yeah. cool, bro. Yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah, all right. It's cool, you know? Now you gotta go to those people that are like detailed with it. Like, uh -huh. for example, if you came up to someone I'd be like, hey, like, how do I, how do I do today? Like, and they were like, oh, you hooped okay. Like, uh -huh. they weren't really You can do attention. better at this and this. Yeah, you know? if, now if you ask the other homie, like homie B, like, yo, like, how did you think I hooped today? Well, you know, you made some shots, you know, you, uh -huh. you, made, you made your open threes uh, in a corner. You had some on the wing, but you gotta, you know. Play better at defense. Get better at defense, you know, like try to crash in the paint a little bit more, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, try to pick up and call off ball screens, you know, yeah, like I saw your defender. Exactly. Like little things, you know, and that's the key thing. Surround yourself with people that actually care to actually like, and, and especially like for you, like, oh, it like most important, especially for sports. What I realized mm -hmm. when I was going in basketball, I had to cut out some stuff. I had to cut out some people that are like, hey, yo, let's go out and, you know, that were kind of pulling you down. Yeah. Let's go out and like, you know, get lit tonight. You know, I'd be like, nah, bro. Like. I got practice. You know, I got homework. To, I got homework. I got practice. Like, not to them. Like, ah, oh, like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. for you. It's what's best for you. I got to get this done now. Because if I don't get it done now, then it's going to hurt me at the end. Exactly. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt you and the development of what you're trying to do. So that I just want to talk about that. I just feel like it's important um, to get that a message across and to kind of make things a little bit more positive to end the episode. Yeah. We're going to do a fun little, uh, would you rather? Okay. Uh, some little stuff, like kind of like, for people to get to know us a little bit, uh, a little bit more to wrap up the show. But <clears throat> let's off the first one. Would you rather be a star player on a bad team or a bench warmer on a great team? A star player on a bad team or a bench warmer on a good team? I would say... So it's either um, you're the best player for the Pistons right now or you're a bench warmer for the Celtics. I'll say I'm a bench warmer for the Celtics, you know, because um, obviously, like I was talking about earlier, I could push myself to the limits, you know, compete for minutes, you know, uh, work hard. So I'll say I'd rather be a bench warmer for uh, for like uh, for, for the, Boston, uh, yeah, Boston Celtics. or whatever good team, yeah, <laughs> for whatever good team, I'll yeah, be, I'd rather be a bench warmer. No, of course, yeah, I would like as much as it would be dope to be like, you know. Like a dope ass player. Like I used Bradley Beal as an example. He was in Washington. Like mm -hmm. good ass player. Like he was just on a very shit team for years, and now he's finally on Phoenix. Thank yeah. God. Um, <laughs> would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? Oh, that's a hard one. Be, you say, say that again. So, would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma oh, for a decade? So, be in jail for decade. five years. Decade is like ten years. I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably say. Ooh, that's so hard because like that is i'd rather be in jail or like because if if you're in jail you know what's going on if you're in a coma yeah. you don't know what's going on so it's like being in a coma is crazy the, the jail is different though but coma yeah if it was a few month coma i'll take it you like, know what? i'm gonna say coma because jail you could die <laughs> that is very true yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna go with 10 years in a coma like anything wrong could go could happen in jail yeah know? i'd rather catch up on things <laughs> you see yeah yeah i'll probably do a coma too it's just crazy though a decade is like 10 years like the amount of like shit you must yeah, miss like a decade like, like not even just sports like imagine like the amount of stuff you miss with family and yeah, stuff like everything, that everything like, birthdays 
Like imagine like, you just wake up from a coma. It's like twenty something. Like it's twenty thirty three, and it's just like oh, like you're catching up with the fam and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're like oh, uh, wasn't going on the NBA this yeah, past. Yeah, now ten you're years. ten years older. <laughs> oh, the Jazz are the best team right now. What the fuck? Like, how are the Jazz? Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> how are they doing good now? And that's why I was just like, man, a coma would be scary. But yeah, anything happen in jail. Would you rather? <clears throat> um, ooh, I don't know about this one. Oh. Would you rather have someone like see every single photo in your gallery or see all of your texts in all time history? That's pretty fucked. See photos or texts. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with uh, photos. Yeah, because yeah, I got, I'm confident I got any yeah, like I got crazy photos. photos. Like yeah. nah, like I don't like do on man. my phone all basketball literally. <laughs> text messages though. Yeah, that's, that's a different, different subject. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> so I can't. Really, I that's can't, crazy. I don't know about my sex. I don't yeah. know about my sex. <laughs> Photos, I got nothing to hide. But yeah, baby pictures and baby family. pictures, podcasts like hooping. Yeah, like, all video, all types. Text stuff. Though, mixtapes. Shit, that's different. I'm talking. to do that. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather have? Um, would you rather be able um, to read minds or predict the future? Read minds or predict the future. Um. I'll definitely say read minds because I definitely don't want to predict the future because then it's like, okay, this person is going to die probably like tomorrow. You know, I don't want to predict that because then it's like, dang, you know, it's like if I could predict the future of myself and then it's like, dang, I really die on this day or this happens to me. Like I know what's going to happen. I would rather not. I'd rather just let it be. So I'd rather just read somebody's mind. Like, okay, that's what you're thinking of right now. (laughs) For me, I am gonna say, uh, Future would be cool, but mm-hmm. man, if I could read someone's mind, like read their attentions, yeah, read like what they're trying to do, like bro, that would be crazy. Uh, you got your crush, you're like, okay, what you thinking about right now? Oh man, I'm looking <laughs> at it like, man, if I were to like play sports again, I'm like on a fast break, and I could read what you're about to do. Uh huh. Oh my god, yeah, I, you can I, hit them with another move. That's I'm, I'm about to read the mind. I think I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, the future would be dope. Uh huh. But if I could read your mind in like little situations, I need the most in. Yeah, I'll read your mind without a shadow of doubt. Definitely. Would you rather be colorblind or lose your sense of taste? Colorblind or lose sense of taste. Colorblind. I would say I'd rather be colorblind, even though everything would be like different, like darker color. Yeah. I would like to taste my food. I'm a very like food critic. Yeah, like, dude. I'd rather like look at the food and then just taste it, you know, just. I want to taste the steak. I want to taste the chicken. Like, yeah. I ain't trying to like that. That'd be I don't weird. want everything to just to taste plain, you know? That'd be crazy. I can't do that. I can't nah. do that. I'll be colorblind. Like, it would be weird at Especially first. Especially the good food that we have in Chicago. No, I need no, to, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> I no. can't be tasteless out here. I'll be colorblind in the instant. Like, you could take color away. Like, I don't mind looking uh-huh. at black and white shit. Like, yeah. that's, I don't mind that <laughs> I shit. I don't mind it. Now, it will be it will be trippy <clears throat> at first. It'll be like, damn. Because it would feel like you're in like the 80s, some yeah. shit. Yeah, like 80s and before. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they could change it now, right? Like they have some glasses or like some some stuff like that. Yeah, I know they've been doing like some cool stuff with that, which is very dope. Um, would you rather always be, we talked about this earlier. Um, would you rather always be uh, cold or hot? I'd rather be hot. I don't like the cold. <laughs> I do not like the cold. I'd rather be sweating yeah. than cold because cold is different. I'm. I don't like the cold. See, for me, like, some people will know what I'm talking about when I say this. Like, I'm one of those people, like, okay, during the winter, I would like my house to be, like, warm. Yeah. But not, like, to the point, like, I'm about to have, like, heat exhaustion or some shit. Uh. <laughs> so, like, I'm one of those weirdos you could say, like, in the winter, I like, like, mm. my ceiling fan on. I like something, mm. like, giving me some sort of cool breeze. Because yeah. for me, like I can't be in straight humidity. Mm. Um, and Chicago heat is crazy. Like, our winter is that bogus. Is. But our summer, man, it'd be it'd torching, be but I might have to go up to summer, man. Because if I'm hot, then I could like, you know, that that wouldn't work because it's either hot or cold. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather be hot. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll be hot. But for me, man, like I'll have those little moments. Like like I said, like I'll have a ceiling fan out in the winter. Mm-hmm. I might have the AC on, on very low settings. Like, I don't know. I just yeah. like some sort of breeze in my room. I can't always be yeah. in a hot room, but if it came down to it. I would because I, I feel out. like if you if you hot you know you're not like getting frostbite or nothing if you're cold you know. Oh yeah, so. for sure. All right. <laughs> now this is crazy. Uh, this is literally a life or death situation. Oh damn. Um, would you rather? Um, so you get paid for it if you if you come out of it alive. So okay. you gotta last at least uh three minutes in a ring with Prime Mike Tyson. <laughs> 
Three minutes. If you last those three, three minutes, minutes, so if you just dodge and joke in his ass, Mike Tyson. T- three minutes. You just need three minutes to survive. I thought you, you gotta say, fight. I thought you were gonna say Mike Tyson now. You don't even gotta fight, okay. dude. Like you just gotta like survive. Just so you laugh. just gotta like three minutes. Okay. Survive those three minutes. You get a you get a milli. Okay. A million dollars. You have to survive one round or survive one round with John Jones in the UFC. Damn. One round. If you survive that one round, you'll get like 50 million. 50 million. So it's Mike Tyson. For three rounds, boxing, or John Jones in one round. Probably Mike Tyson or John Jones. That's so hard. I. One round in UFC is actually very crazy. Yeah, they could kick your ass. Yeah, like John Jones got big day. ass legs. Yeah, I'd be playing UFC. I'd be using them. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mike Tyson. I'm like, well, I'll probably try to maneuver his punches or <laughs> whatever he's gonna do. At least I know. At least I know that he can't kick. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with Mike Tyson. I'd rather do that than John Jones. See that suicide, but no. I think three rounds. Oh, fuck, it's three rounds, bro. Yeah. You see, it depends how long the round. If these are five minute rounds, you see, people will think like, oh, five minutes, that's nothing. But uh-huh. if that's you don't. a long time. <clears throat> bro, like, I don't know about you. Have you ever had that moment? Like, let's say you at work or school or whatever. Like, you just got there. You think and time went by. Look at your phone. It's only like five minutes. Bro, yeah. I don't know. When I always look at the time, time drags, bro. So people mm. think, oh, five minutes. <sighs> It's five minutes, but bro. Yeah. It depends too, because sometimes it's like if you keep checking the time, then it's going to drag. But if you just like be nonchalant, like then like the time will go by quick. You see, or like if you're doing something. Exactly. A five minute basketball run may look quick, but a five minute boxing run? Yeah. Like, bro, in those five minutes. You're thinking about the time, like, okay, when is this going to end? I'm going to keep looking like, damn, bro, I got one more minute with this. Uh, dude, I got to keep maneuvering. Fuck. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Mike Tyson. John <laughs> Jones, literally, like, his his leg is insane. Like yeah, he could reach killing. you from across the octagon, especially um, in the UFC. Oh uh, man, I think I got um one more. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, if it came down to, would you um always stay in uh the shade of Chicago, or if you had the chance, um, so let's say, would you rather live in uh always live in America, or would you rather at some point live uh, abroad overseas? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I would probably. That's a hard question. Um, ooh, I guess yourself a crib in Italy or something. Yeah, that would be real nice. But also, I would probably, yeah, I'd probably go somewhere else, experience a new lifestyle. You know, yeah, something different. You know, yeah, because that's like I love Chicago to death. Always will. I love you know as much as this country gets on my nerves. Like, yeah. I, I you know I was born and raised here. You know, I, I'm a representative. Mm, definitely um, for sure. Like I love Chicago. I've always wanted like if I were to go somewhere in America, like. I would definitely want to go to Cali, mm. or Florida, Florida, Miami, warmer state. Uh, Texas would be cool. They, you know, they got some cool stuff. Uh, Arizona, no state taxes in Texas, so yeah. that's dope. <laughs> uh, property is cheap, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, but yeah, I probably go overseas too. I probably go overseas too. But ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of board talk. Uh, I mean, <laughs> deep depth <laughs> episode nine. I thought about my old show for a second, but <laughs> man, uh, Daniel Delo, thank you I, I for coming on the show, bro. Uh, I'm glad like people got to know you a little bit, support you on your journey. And like I said, you guys check him in the link in the description below. Check out yes, his sir. Instagram, TikTok, everything will be in the link in the description below. Uh, any, uh, last words you want to say before we wrap it up, my friend? Um, just come check out Lakeview this year. We're going crazy. We're going for regionals. Um, yeah, I'm going to just keep on hooping. Um, I appreciate my mom for everything she does. Like, yeah, for everything she does. Cause, um, my, uh, father passed away. Yeah. My uh, dad passed away from cancer. It was, it was fucking crazy. Um, but it just taught me like, you know, he's looking down on me to do better things. So Always be just keep working hard, keep doing what you're doing and live your life. Like he said, keep working hard. You guys, that was very beautiful words and your pops will be proud, man. Uh, he, you definitely gonna be proud, bro. And like he said, y'all, like keep working hard and everything will come y'all way. Don't even think about yesterday. Always think about the next day moving forward. So D Lo, yes, appreciate you, man. It was a great episode. And we'll see y'all in the next one on episode 10. Yes, sir. Deuces.